Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test with the new computer. <laughs> it finally came. We finally got started. So, yes, and I'll make sure that I'm not looking at the microphone. I'm looking over here at the camera and talking to you, the Smart Drivers, who are here on the channel. And yes, and there I sit on the computer screen with the funny grin on my face <laughs> looking to get started here. And the color is a little bit off. I'm just going to adjust the color here a little bit and see if I can get that going for you. But uh, yeah, just bear with us on the uh, technical challenges that we're having here. So what do I need to do? Just uh, bump up the contrast, bump up that a little bit. There we go, bump that up. Save, that should, that should fix that, there we go. So, new computer, iMac Pro, we're very excited about this. And Peter's here, hi Peter. And uh, what else did I get done today? Uh, I managed to finish up the defensive driving course. And it, for, the, for the next two weeks, the defensive driving course, for anybody who purchased the uh, defensive driving course, it's $9.99 for, for the first two weeks it's out there. Very good resolution. Thank you so much, Jewel. As I said, yes, the new computer finally arrived. <laughs> Three times tried to get it going. So yes, I'm very happy about the new resolution. The old computer, the processing just would not keep up. So Corey's here, Bricks for Wheels. That's Corey. Corey is doing the moderating. And good evening, Corey. Thanks, everybody. I apologize for getting going here a bit late. Just uh, transferring all the information over to the new computer. Uh, yes, uh, if you had any videos, I'm backing around the corner. Yes, Libin, uh, the video you're looking for is two-point reverse turn is the video that you're looking for and that is a maneuver that they could potentially ask you on a road test so it's called two point reverse turn and that's essentially backing around a corner silas is here uh teaching road signs and right of way on a four-way stop yes i do silas uh there's a general overview of uh, right of way there's a video on two-way stops and there's a video on four-way stops and Corey will find that information for you. Corey's really good at that. Uh, Arion, uh, with people I've always wanted to be a city bus driver, do you have any tips for me? Yes, Arion, there is a video, or not a video, but a live stream rather, that I did a few weeks ago and Corey might be able to find that for you. Uh, it's on uh, becoming a transit bus driver and what you need to do in order to become a transit bus driver uh, some of the things you should, should consider and should think about. Now, Arion, is there anyone in your family that is a transit bus driver currently that uh, would work as a role model, model or as a mentor for you? Because that'll help you out too. Um, and the other thing I'll just say, Arion, about uh, transit bus drivers, that's a really good question about working as a city bus driver. Uh, one of the things that they've moved towards now is not so much about being able to drive the bus, but really what they're looking for in terms of being a transit bus driver is they're looking for attitude. They're really looking for you to be able to work there and uh, you know, have a great attitude, have great customer service. That's really what it's about because the rest of it they can, they can teach. So driving lessons by Big Mac Sam. This is uh, Sam Arroyo. Sam is from the Bronx in New York City there and is a driving instructor and teaches there. So if anybody has any questions, and actually Sam, you're not late. I was late tonight because I was transferring over the data for the new computer. I'm very excited about the new computer. And uh, for those of you who don't know the story about the computer, I purchased a new iMac in the fall. So it was in late October. I got it up and running in November. The I had troubles with the computer ever since I first got it. It crashed three times. And finally, the last time it crashed, it had to go back into the store because they said they just couldn't help me over the uh, over the phone in terms of customer support and finally the last time it went in I said to Apple I said I don't want it back I said I want you to take it back give me a refund for it for it and I will upgrade uh, to an iMac Pro which the iMac Pro has just came out in December and if you look at them they're a really really high-end computer so uh, so that's what I'm live streaming to you tonight I was trying to get that transferred over with the backup and that sort of thing and I got it up and I got it working <laughs> <laughs> in time to do the live stream so I'm a half an hour late so you're not late Sam it was actually me tonight so crazy and lazy when turning left should you be scanning for stop signs across the way to see if you should yield to through traffic uh, you should definitely be scanning the cross traffic crazy 
uh, to be not so much looking for through traffic, but what you should be looking for is looking for pedestrians who might be crossing the street on the cross traffic. That's what you need to be doing. So, um, Foyad, ah, yes, match rev. Now you're going to hear my little pet peeve about match revving. Okay, there are some channels here that will tell you that match revving is something that's going to improve your driving. That's baloney. Absolutely blown it. Rev matching has absolutely no place in everyday driving of a manual transmission. Okay, the purpose of rev matching, it is a racing technique. And the purpose of rev matching, of using your heel toe on the brake and the throttle at the same time is to throttle up, shift down and maintain the same speed. And the reason for that is when you go into a corner in a rear wheel drive vehicle, uh, when you're racing at high speeds, when you brake, you lift the back end of the vehicle up. So what race drivers are doing is when they rev match, they're throttling up, they're maintaining the same speed in a lower gear, and then they're maintaining the equilibrium in the vehicle so the back end doesn't lift up. Because if the back end lifts up at a high speed in a corner, what's going to happen is you're going to get what's called oversteering, where the back end of the vehicle kicks out. And that's what race car drivers are preventing when they rev match. In everyday driving, just slow the vehicle down and then just shift down. It has absolutely no place in everyday driving. And these race car drivers who are rev matching in a manual transmission on a track have spent thousands and thousands and thousands of hours rev matching. I have been double clutching forever since I was in my early 20s. Actually, probably before that when I was on the farm, double clutching non synchromesh transmissions. And even I don't get it right in my car because my little Honda there, when you're going up a hill, you got to come down and you got to double clutch to get a nice smooth shift on a hill to get it going. So rev matching, if you're just driving everyday manual transmission, you don't need to rev match. Okay. All right. So Anarta. I'm practicing for the DMV in Lincoln, Nebraska, Class O license. Uh, how should I adjust my speed to make a left turn or right turn at a signal or a stop sign? Uh, so, Anarda, if you're not coming to a stop, on a right turn you have to get down to sort of 8 to 10 miles an hour, and on a left turn it's going to vary depending on how big the intersection is. On a left turn you're going to be anywhere from f sort of 12 to 25 miles an hour on a left turn. And again, on a right turn, you're going to be sort of 10 to 12 miles an hour. And you want to get to that speed before you start making the turn. That's going to really help you out in terms of your turns. Get your speed first and then work the steering wheel. Uh, in higher vehicles, um, uh, commercial vehicles, when you're shifting a non synchromesh transmission and those types of things, we always tell students, get into the gear that you're going to go around the corner in before you start going around the corner. And that way it's going to allow you to have more control when you're going around the corner. All right. Uh, this video on right of way is recommended. Learning to drive and determine right of way. Give right of way to others. There you go. So that's all good. Yes. And how to learn to drive. There are a couple of exercises in that video that are really good. And I come back to again. I say this again and again and again to students. If you're asking me how much you have to turn the steering wheel or when you should start turning the steering wheel on a corner, you really should go back to the parking lot and do the exercises in that video and master the primary controls of the vehicle, the steering wheels, the brake, and the throttle. Once you master those three controls and you can back up around corners, you can back up in a straight line for a long distance, you can back around corners and those types of things, uh, then carry on and start moving out onto the road but you really got to master the fundamentals of driving before you start going out onto the roadway okay uh liam what is your preference for hand over hand versus hand to hand steering that taught us hand to hand because of air brags in driver's ed but i really dislike it okay uh liam yeah i don't like hand to hand either there just isn't enough control and you can't move the steering wheel fast enough I am really a hand over hand person and I did they give you a reason uh, Liam about why hand to hand they felt that that had something to do with airbags uh, the only thing that I have heard about airbags is that we've moved our hand position to eight and two which is in my mind uncomfortable and does not allow you to have good control over the vehicle 
and eight and two is because of the airbags deploying out. And what happens is, is you get uh, forearm injuries, you get broken forearms and those types of things. So that's the only other reason. So, uh, so yeah, hand to hand. Unless the driving authority where you're going to take your test requires you to do hand to hand for the purposes of the test, I would just do hand hand over hand, okay? Otherwise, you know, just move on with it. All right. Okay, so we got all that. Um, Anarda's question, we got that. Sam is here. So, Sam, here's a question for you, Sam, if you're still there. Did you notice a big downturn in the number of students and driving tests that you were doing at the end of April, like sort of through the, the last three weeks of April and into the first week of May, and now it's starting to pick up again once we're getting into the end of May and early June? Because I'm just trying to gauge the viewership on my channel versus what's really happening sort of in driver education and the number of uh, students and whatnot who are actually getting a license. So did, have you noticed a downturn in April there in terms of driver's tests and whatnot? There we got, okay, random. Uh, random guy, does it hurt when you get hit by near, near what? <laughs> it got cut off there. Oh, okay, if you get hit by an, an airbag. It, airbags, when they first appeared on high-end uh, cars and when they first came out in the late 1990s, there were quite a number of people who in fact were being injured by airbags because what happened was is they they didn't have the timing of the airbags quite right what was happening was is that the, the collision was occurring the person was coming forward and as the person was coming forward the airbag was still deploying and it was still inflating so what happened was is the the person's body was coming forward like this even if they're restrained by a seat belt their head and whatnot was coming forward the airbag was coming out and you were getting a collision and oftentimes for many people with airbags in the early uh, uh, adoption of airbags on cars, people would ha get broken uh, under their eyes, their skull would, their eye, this part of their face would be broken, their nose would be broken, and they would sustain serious injury to their face. Now airbags are much better because now what's happened is they've got the timing right on the airbags. So when the person is coming forward, the airbag has already fully deployed, and when the person's face hits the airbag, the airbag is beginning to deflate. So airbags are much, much better now than what they were when they first came out in the late 1990s. <clears throat> uh, yeah, Sam, I had a... Um, <laughs> it was odd because I was doing VEDA in April, doing a video every day in April, and I was thinking that the views on my channel were going to go up when, in fact, <laughs> my channel just tanked in April. Uh, so it was pretty pretty disappointing doing all of those videos on VEDA and then just see the, t the, the channel tank. So yeah, that's what happened. Okay. Uh, Fuad, what is the perfect time to warm up a normal car and start driving? Uh, Fuad, you need 15 seconds. You need the oil pressure to come up and as soon as the oil pressure comes up, you can start driving. Now, of course, the vehicle is, the engine is still cold. It's not warmed up. So only drive it moderately for about 15 or 20 minutes until the all the operating temperature comes up and then you can start really wailing on it after a while. And race car drivers and other uh, car enthusiasts will tell you that as well. Don't start gassing on it until it actually warms up. But you, but you only need the oil pressure to come up and then you can start driving it moderately if it's a fuel injected vehicle. Okay. Uh, Liam, they teach three and nine and said with hand over hand, your arms are crossing over the steering wheel more so there's a higher likelihood for injury. Okay, that Liam, that makes sense. That definitely makes sense because that's one of the things that we teach in martial arts. If somebody's got their arms crossed like this, we grab this arm here and put it over. But, uh, you know, there's there's a possibility for injury, but I think I think it's I think it's low. I don't. I'm not sure. I completely buy into that. Sam, what do you think about that in terms of hand over hand and airbags and that idea now that we should use hand to hand? Or what did you call it? Milking? You called it milking the cow <laughs> uh, for uh, hand to hand there. Okay, Jonathan. Hi, I'm driver's test next month. What do you recommend before going? Okay, so Jonathan, if you haven't done the basic maneuvers already, learning the primary controls and being very comfortable with the primary controls, look at that video on learning to drive and do those video those exercises in that video. As well, for a driving test, there's always four components. Doesn't matter where you're taking your road test in the world or what class of license it is. 
speed management, space management, observation, communication. Those are the four fundamentals of any road test. So uh, speed management, posted speed limit, or the flow of traffic, whichever is less. That's how fast you drive the vehicle. Space management, don't get near any fixed objects. Don't get near other road users. Stop at the correct stopping positions at stop sign uh, intersections, uh, before the crosswalk, before the stop line, before where the two roads meet, if there isn't a crosswalk line or a stop line. Uh, stop in traffic so that you can see the tires in front of you on, on the vehicle in front of you making clear contact with the pavement and two to three second following distance for space management. Okay, so then you've got observation. You have to observe, so you have to have a good scanning pattern in place. You're looking far down the road, you're checking your mirrors, your center mirror far down the road, wing mirrors far down the road, check your uh, your instrument panel and then far down the road and when you're doing reverse maneuvers you're going to do a 360 degree scan before you move back and then while you're backing up every vehicle length you're going to stop the vehicle and look forward and make sure you're straight and those types of things and then finally every time you turn the vehicle you're going to do two shoulder checks one approximately just before you start the maneuver and then half a block from the turn you're going to do another one and then immediately before you start moving so you're going to do two shoulder checks for every time you move the vehicle laterally so those are the four components of any road test okay uh, uh, what else so that's basically it so then there's another video here on a mock road test and Corey will get that up for you have a look at that as well Jonathan that'll give you a good overview of what you need to do okay Silas why should you why should you warm a car up and how can you tell when it's warm okay so Silas you don't need to warm the car up you don't need to let it sit there and idle. you only need to let it run for about 15 seconds and then you can drive off you can tell when it's warm when the when the uh, engine temperature gauge gets up to operating temperature and you'll get used to the car and where the engine temperature is sitting and if that engine temperature goes too high uh, you need to shut the vehicle off because you're going to blow up the engine because it's too hot and it won't run properly okay now even though that engine temperature gauge if you feel like you're going to start racing and gassing on it and doing all kinds of goofy things even though the engine temperature gauge is up to temperature, the drivetrain, the transmission and the differential and all those types of things aren't up to temperature. So you gotta drive it probably for about a half an hour, 40 minutes before the entire engine drivetrain and everything is warmed up to operating temperature if you're gonna start racing and doing goofy things with it. So know that, that you can do a fair bit of damage if the vehicle and the drivetrain, not just the engine, but the drivetrain as well is not warm, okay? We, we can talk more about that as well. I'll just answer some of these other questions here. All right. Um, I'm not sure why that happens. You would think there would be great views with the Veda series. Yeah, the, the Veda series was kind of a failed exercise, Sam. It didn't really go over too well. And, and actually, uh, I had a, I, I had a consult with uh, Tim Schmoyer, which some of you may know. He has a YouTube channel, and he does how to do YouTube, and he's been doing it for a long time. I really like Tim's stuff. And I had a consult with Tim, and Tim gave me some really good feedback, and we both agreed that the Veda series was not one of my better series. So, <laughs> so we're going to try. So you're going to see some new stuff coming up here. And actually, uh, I would also like to uh, hear people's opinion about the new channel art. I got new channel art done on the YouTube channel. If you're watching it on the replay as well, be sure to give it a thumbs up if you like what you see here on the channel. And if you like what you see here on the channel, also consider subscribing to Smart Drive Test. We'd always, and we always love to hear from you. Uh, JFSA, two things. Opinions are on automatic truck transmissions, not fond of them myself, slow shifting, and are block heaters really that useful outside of Nunavut? Uh, JFSA, yes, I agree with you on automatic transmissions. I am not a fan of them. Uh, there's no way that automatic transmissions are going to be able to do the work of manual transmissions in terms of fuel economy and they're certainly not going to be able to pull super bees through the mountains for some time coming uh, you know anything under 80,000 pounds I think automatic transmissions on the flat are going to do just fine and uh, that is reflected in most of the fleets in the United States now being uh, automatic transmissions here in Canada and on the west coast of the United States I think they're still mostly 18 speed transmissions and yes block heaters are a must on diesel trucks still uh, in most places where it gets cold if it gets down to minus 10 you need a block heater on a diesel truck or it's still just not going to start 
All right. Sam, yes, I call milking the cow. I do hand over hand all the time and don't think about the airbag situation at all. There you go. And I and I, I agree with you, Sam. I don't think about the airbag situation either. I do hand over hand. Ryan, hi, Ryan. How are you? Uh, just listening while finding videos to review before my next drive. That's great. Uh, that's awesome. Okay. Robin, love your videos. Thank you so much, Robin. That's awesome. And uh, thank you so much for the boost here. Uh Okay, random guy was told my driving instructor the point of no return. What does that mean? Random guy, was he talking about yellow lights, yellow traffic lights? Because what we talk about in terms of the point of no return on yellow traffic lights is that you're at a, you're so close to the intersection within one vehicle length of the intersection. If you're that close to the light and the light goes yellow, you're not going to stop. It's point of no return. You can't you can't get back. Uh, how to pass parallel parking for the driver's test? Kells. Kells, what you need to do, uh, start with the learn to drive video, which I think Corey's already put up here, and get control of the um, primary controls as well. Go out and get some of those one meter tall, 36 inch uh, tall pylons, the delineators from your local rental shop. You can rent for them. They're less than $10 for a day. And go down to a parking lot at a church or grocery store parking lot or a movie parking lot or someplace like that and just set the cones up and drive around them and uh, you'd be able to uh, work with your primary controls. Yes, Sam, I agree. Tim is really great. And, uh, you know, the consult session that I had with him for the hour, he just gave me some really awesome feedback on my channel. And I really feel like, you know, I think it was a good thing that the computer kind of went down for the last couple, two, three weeks, and I haven't been making videos because I think it's kind of allowed me to really reflect on where I want the channel to go for forward from here and Tim gave me some really great stuff so I'm really interested in hearing what people have to say about because I'm getting a new intro done for my videos I'm gonna change the the beginning of my videos and I and I was kind of working on that with the Veda series and also like I said I've already, I've done the, the uh, I, I've done some new channel art and I just you know I'm really looking forward to people's feed, feedback and the feedback I did put up a poll for the uh, new channel art and people uh, gave me uh, good feedback about that. I think about 70% of people, uh, smart drivers, really said that they really liked it. So, you know, if you're watching on the replay and you like the new channel art, give it a thumbs up and uh, that'd be really great. Okay, Silas, I don't know if this is related to the video, but how do you improve sense of direction? I feel scared because I may get lost and do not know how to get back. All right, so Silas, definitely look on the on the video there on route planning and navigation. And one of the other things, Silas, if you're driving an older vehicle and you don't have one that tells you northwest, southeast, then go out and get one of those compasses that you can put on the dash, which will give you directions, northeast, south, and west. And that way as well, I don't know where you are in the world, Silas, but a couple of things, one of the things, I live in Vernon, British Columbia, and we have mountains on the east and on the west side of town. So if we're going north or south, you have, you know you have a mountain range on the north or on the west and on the east. And when I drove in Melbourne, Australia, I lived there for five years. And if you were driving, now let me see here, uh, east west, and you knew where north and south was because oftentimes you could see the cityscape of Melbourne, Australia, and you could see the bay, and you knew where the bay was because you knew where north, south, east, and west were. And so if you get a direction of where north, south, east, and west are, it's going to give you a better sense of direction as well. That um, video navigation and route planning will show you how to go through Google Maps. It'll show you how to use Google Maps. It'll also show you how to use your phone and how to use the, the map app on your phone. And as well, it'll show you how to use a GPS unit and whatnot. So all of that will help you out in terms of sense of direction and navigation. Okay. So... Libin, when taking the exam in a new area, how do you avoid missing turns when the instructor says to do so? I'm trying to avoid going too fast or too slow. Yes, Libin, you really want to try to get up to the posted speed limit as quickly as possible for the purposes of a road test. As I said, the speed limit for the purposes of a road test is either the posted speed limit or the flow of traffic, whichever is less. And you want to get up to speed as quickly as possible. The driving examiners are good at giving you directions and giving you directions early. They're gonna say, you know, at the controlled intersection, turn left. And it's gonna be three or four blocks before the controlled intersection. And when they say controlled intersection, it's going to be 
a yield sign, a stop sign, or a set of traffic lights. That's what they mean by a controlled intersection. When they say uncontrolled intersection, most of the time that's you're on a major road and they want you to turn onto a minor road. So they want you to turn at the next road. So if they say turn left at the next control uncontrolled intersection, that means the next street, they want you to turn left. And most driving examiners are really good because they do it all the time. They know you're nervous. They know that you're under scrutiny and that you're prone to making errors because you're you're you know you're being tested. So they they're good at giving you lots of advance notice in terms of where you need to turn and those types of things. Fuad, there's a brand of airbags that can kill the driver even in small crashes. So I think that is better to deactivate the airbag. Uh, yeah, I would definitely want to find out about that that airbag but most airbags now are safe they've improved them a lot and they've done a lot of uh, crash testing on airbags to make the to provide maximum safety to vehicle occupants and uh, pickup truck airbags on the passenger side can be turned off if you have people who are smaller I think it's smaller than 80 pounds in the front seat uh, as well there's a sensor in the seat uh, to indicate that if there isn't a passenger in there or the passenger is too light, the airbag won't activate. So the technology is getting much, much better in terms of airbags and those types of things. Okay, Sarah, my driving instructor, where'd you go? Uh, my driving instructor told me you are not checking your blind spots correctly. Can you please tell me when should I check them while driving? Okay, uh, Sarah. Okay, are you, Sarah, are you talking about shoulder checking? Is he or she saying that you're not shoulder checking correctly for the purposes of your blind, of your checking your blind spots? All right, Libin. <laughs> oh, you are most welcome, Libin, and thank you for the compliment, and thank you for the compliment for Corey, too. Corey does some great work on the channel here and really makes it, uh, all of this possible for me to do the work that I can do and it's I tell you the, the channel has really got a great boost when Corey's come on board and done the work he has that's for sure okay mystery can a person with cerebral palsy drive and if so how are they graded someone asked me and this is why I'm asking you mystery so what you need to do mystery is uh, I don't know where you live and Ryan's here and I know Ryan is driving with hand controls and mystery um, what you would need to do is there is an organization and if you con I think if you're in the states if you contact the DOT the Department of Transportation they will give you the name of the organization so you need to contact them and then they will do an evaluation and oftentimes they want you to go to your medical doctor and get a certificate of, of you know like get a medical done so that you bring that certificate to the to the the center that's going to do the testing for for people with uh, disabilities and essentially what they'll do is sometimes they'll have a driving instructor sometimes it might be just an occupational therapist the driving instructor and the occupational therapist at least when I used to do driver rehabilitation it was myself and a occupational therapist and we would take you out in the vehicle and we would do a driving assessment to see if there if you were a candidate to be retrained or to be trained to get your license so there you go mystery so you're in Chicago Illinois uh, I can look that up for you, Mystery. Send me an email, rick at smartdrivetest.com, and I'll look into that for you in terms of Chicago. I think I could find that information for you, and then you would just simply go for an evaluation, and then you would move forward from there. Okay? Hall phase. How are you this evening? Great evening. Dorcas, just wanted to commend you for your help. Thank you very much. That's great. Didn't uh, Dorcas just remind me, you did just get your license, right? I'm, we're, we're correct on that, I think. I remember there's been it's been really great I mean there have been many many smart drivers uh, who have been passing their their tests um, in the last month or so I mean it has just been really great to hear people say that they passed the road test and I had a part in that it's just been really great and I mean this morning somebody from Dubai passed the road test I had another smart driver from Belgium asking me questions this morning so it's just been it's been really great uh, all the people in the world Okay, clockwork. Uh, glad to watch again. I was wondering if I'm driving with my parents and the tags are expired and I get pulled over. Will I get a ticket or my parents? Uh, clockwork. Um, I'm not. The the driver is going to get the tickets because uh, you should have been dry. You should have done a pre-trip inspection and known that everything was uh, the the 
uh, decals were valid on the vehicle. So go get those done and don't drive around without with expired decals. Okay, so Sarah, so you need some help with shoulder checking. So Sarah, you need to shoulder check two times for every time you move the vehicle laterally. So when you're turning, for example, you need to shoulder check approximately half a block before the turn and then you stop and you need to shoulder check again. If you're stopped there for some time at the intersection and you're going to turn, then you need to shoulder check again immediately before you turn. Now, if you're gonna lane change or move the vehicle laterally, mirror signal shoulder check. So you gotta turn your signal on, have a look, shoulder check at the same time and check your mirror to make sure that it, there's a space there and you can fit into the gap. And then three flashes on the signal minimum. And then once you start moving over, immediately shoulder check again. So that's when you shoulder check for the purposes of uh, driving and checking your blind spots while you're driving. So that's what you need to do, okay? All right, Silas, my mom tells me ahead of time, for example, to make a right turn at the next light and change lanes, but I get confused and can't remember any tips I can keep messing up. Uh, Silas, if you're not hearing the directions that your mom is giving you while you're driving, what is it that you're thinking about or concentrating on that is causing you to tune your mom out or you're not processing that information because what it would seem to me as a driving instructor is, is that there's a lot going on and it's not that you didn't hear your mom it's the fact that you got so much going on in terms of what you're concentrating on and you're driving and you're focused on that that you're not listening because as driving instructors and, and sam will probably say the same thing as what i'm about to say is that i know for a fact that when when i'm in the car with a student and he or she is doing a left hand turn i just stop talking because I know for a fact that the student isn't listening to what I'm saying. And it's interesting, the truck, there's a truck video that I just put up about three weeks ago about right turns in a truck. And I hadn't been in the truck for a couple of weeks, couple of months. And I was concentrating on trying to shift the truck and drive the truck. And so you see me, there's some big pauses in that video because I'm trying to, I'm trying to concentrate what, on what I'm doing and I'm trying to talk to the camera at the same time. So if you've got a lot going on and you're concentrating and your mom is trying to give you directions, uh, it's not that you're not hearing her, it's just that you've got a lot of other stuff going on. And what I might suggest, Silas, is that you have a look at that video, learning how to drive, and then go back to the parking lot and revisit those fundamentals again. Because again, I come back to that same point again and again and again. Slow speed maneuvers, working in the parking lot with the pylons, and doing those exercises in the parking lot will improve your overall driving. So do not negate that. Go back to that and revisit that and that will help you with that again. All right. Hall phase, do you get health benefits when you are a Cal driver or a bus driver? Uh, most places hall phase you do get benefits when you're a, a transit driver because you're part of the union. Uh, depending on which coach company or bus com company that you're working for, you will get benefits with them okay two weeks tomorrow there we go dorcas that's really awesome that you passed your road test that's really lucky really great hall phase uh are you to become how like the um hall phase what's a cal driver cal 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 <laughs> sorry cdl driver i mean you can become a you can become a cdl driver you're going to be just fine um <laughs> uh, Liam, is it okay to cross a double yellow line to pass a bicycle? Uh, probably not, Liam. You would probably want to wait until the line gets to be, um, it would really depend on where you are, uh, whether you're going to cross that double line or not. But there's a video here as well, uh, how to change lanes. Look at that video, Corey will be able to find that for you and it'll tell you how to move around somebody that's smaller, like a, a cyclist or those types of things. But essentially, you know, it's like changing a lane. You got a signal, mirror signal, shoulder check, shoulder check, three flashes on the signal, look again, move out, around, and then signal back and come in, right? Okay. Uh, hall phase, hello, 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 we got everybody here, okay. Oh, CDL driver, there we go, okay, yes. So, um, easy to become a CDL driver. Uh, I think in most places you have to be a minimum age. I know here in British Columbia, uh, you have to be 19 years old to get a class one CDL license, which is tractor trailer. And then it's just a matter of going through truck driving school and getting your license. And, uh, so, I mean, as long as you have a 
you know, you're, you don't have too many speeding tickets. Uh, because really the goal of going to truck driving school or bus driving school is to get a job, excuse me, at the end of that, right? So you need to have a fairly clean criminal record. If you are driving in the States or working in the States as a CDL driver, uh, you need to be drug free because you're going to be drug tested when you go into the States. Uh, <laughs> they got distracted there. Sorry, I shouldn't be reading the comments when I'm talking. So that's what you need to do. And as long as you're, you're abstract your driving abstract because to go to, to get a job as a cdl driver they're going to ask you for your driver's abstract we all have a driver's abstract that the licensing authority keeps uh and it shows all our speeding tickets and and uh tickets and crashes that we've had or any other uh, traffic uh highway traffic act infractions that we've had so keep that clean if uh, you're going to go on to become a CDL driver, okay? And then it's just a matter of going to driving school and then, you know, getting a job and, uh, and those types of things. Uh, oh, there we go. <laughs> I agree. Uh, Sam says, I agree with you. Uh, sometimes I'm having a conversation with a student and all of a sudden the student stops talking because of something going on and I'll remain quiet too so they can concentrate. Yes. And uh, on what they're doing. Yes. So... Sam agrees with me that sometimes the traffic situation demands the driver's entire attention and if the driving instructor or the mentor is talking to that student and the student doesn't hear them the reason is is because the student is concentrating on the traffic situation because the the overarching competency for you to pass a road test is to demonstrate to the examiner that you have due care and control of the vehicle in a fluid driving situation. In other words, that driving situation is changing all of the time. And driving examiners want to know that you can change your driving habits to remain safe in changing situations of driving. And this is why driving is so complex. And I come back to this again, the six factors of the driving task, right? The driver, the vehicle, traffic, the road, uh, light and weather. Those are the six combinations of, are the six criteria of driving that are always changing and make it difficult. And they can come together in, in one situation to be completely innocuous, harmless, or another situation can be really dangerous. So know that. Uh, can we go on a raid after the stream? <laughs> Absolutely, Hall Phase. It might be a little bit tough for us to all get together, but that sounds like fun. Sounds like fun. Okay. Uh, Guamakia, I didn't say that right, I do apologize. How do I judge the front and back of my car when parking in a tight spot? Okay, the best way to do that, and I've had this question uh, a little bit over the last few weeks, how do you judge in a tight space? One of the best ways to learn where your vehicle is in space and place, if you are in the least bit doubt, get out of your vehicle and actually have a look. And I don't counsel you to do that on a road test. Do not, actually don't do that on a road test. But when you're learning how to drive and you're still in the novice phase of driving, get out of the vehicle and have a look. And this is especially important if you start moving up to bigger vehicles, if you start moving up to pickup trucks and you start moving up and towing trailers and boats and recreational trailers and you start moving up to buses and those whatnot. If you are in the least bit of doubt when you're parking or backing up that vehicle or in a space that's really tight, get out and look and put that skill in place because you look like a complete amateur if you just keep going and you back into something. But if you actually get out and look, then you don't look like an amateur. You only look like an amateur when you hit something. So get out and look. Don't be embarrassed to do that because it's going to be much more embarrassing if you do hit something. So that's how you're going to learn space and place. And the other uh, video that I would counsel you to have a look at is have a look at the blind spots around your vehicle video and that will show you how big those blind areas around your vehicle from when you're sitting in the driver's seat okay uh Eli failed my first test on friday sorry about that that's uh, unsuccessful on your attempt there uh, between them, apparently I had to cancel my signal light to turn it on again, not keep it on. Thoughts? Okay, so um, then right again at about 10 meters between them. Apparently I had to cancel my signal light then turn it back on again. Oh. Eli, I, I'm, I, can't, I can't comment specifically because I don't know the exact situation I, and, I, and you know I wasn't there in the car. Uh, that sounds... 
it sounds a bit dubious because if it's a short distance between one right hand to the next right hand turn, uh, I would have just counseled you to leave your light on, but uh, your your signal light on. Now, what I would counsel you for the next time, Ela, is hire a driving school and do a practice driving test. As Sam says, Sam is uh, uh, driving lessons with Big Mac Sam. This is Sam Arroyo. He works as a driving instructor for Rookie Auto Driving School there in the Bronx. Uh, in the, they do practice driving tests for about twenty dollars. It's really inexpensive in most U.S. states. So if you can get a practice driving test, do that, and then you'll know for sure whether you're ready or not, and you'll know which skills and abilities that you have to improve in order to be successful on a road test. And as well, it's just great twenty dollars spent. Even if it's fifty dollars, it's still a bargain because you know you're going to pass your road test for sure. Okay, let's see. Um, <laughs> just drive a crappy car so you don't have to worry about hitting the curb. Yeah, unfortunately, you can't hit the curb on a road test. You can touch the curb, but don't don't hit the curb. Uh, there we go. Okay. Hall phase. Can you show us how to in, uh, evade paying tolls? I'll tell you a funny story about that hall phase. Uh, some years ago when I drove truck, we used to run the East Coast a lot. And, of course, for those of you who are on the East Coast of the U.S., around New York, uh... <laughs> yeah, 20 bucks. Come on down there, Sam. So the tolls, uh, of course, there's a there's a toll on the Massachusetts Turnpike. There's tolls on New Jersey Turnpike in you know across the George W. Washington Bridge, the Verrazano in onto Staten Island, and all those types of things. And of course, one of the dispatchers was going on about how this truck driver named Whiskers. Of course, Whiskers was a Harley Davidson motorcycle rider, and he had a big white beard. And he said, Whiskers never pays tolls, blah, 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 right? So I'm trying to figure out how to get around the tolls on the Massachusetts Turnpike. I'm like, how the heck do you get from Buffalo to Boston without paying a toll? And of course, I'm trying to figure this out because we used to avoid the, whole, the, the toll on I-90 by going down uh, across inter, our high, State Road 17 in New York State when we went from Buffalo to New York City. Well, we used to avoid the toll, and I'd do everything I could to avoid tolls. And then finally, about three or four weeks later, I ran into Whiskers, and I said, Whiskers, how do you avoid the toll on the Massachusetts Turnpike? <laughs> he starts laughing, he looks at me, and he goes, I don't avoid the toll, I just go down the turnpike. <laughs> so what people are telling you about avoiding tolls isn't necessarily true sometimes. Sometimes it's just cheaper to pay the toll. There you go. That's my, that's my, my two cents on avoiding tolls in the U.S. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, Jemmer, do you need to use signal lights when doing three-point turn? Now, Jemmer, I don't, some places will not get you to do, or you don't have to use turn signals for doing three-point turns. However, the three-point turn video that I do here, I do get you to signal. And again, if you do signal when you're doing your three-point turns, it demonstrates to the examiner that you have due care and control of the vehicle and that you can communicate to other traffic when you're doing maneuvers on the roadway. So I would encourage you to use your signals while you're practicing and learning how to do your three-point turns. Okay? Oh, it's unfortunate. <laughs> okay, so Sam, the student was unsuccessful on the practice driving test or the dr student was unsuccessful on the DOT test. Okay, Liam, I'm from New York and I see the license plate covers everywhere. There you go. Or they just accidentally spilled paint on their tags. There you go. Okay. Ah, they have clear ones that distort plate when... Okay, clockwork, I mean, what would you recommend doing if you run out of gas and you're stuck in traffic? Uh, clockwork, I would really recommend that you not run out of fuel. If your fuel tank gets down to a quarter of a tank, put fuel in it. It's just so much easier than running out of fuel. If you do run out of fuel, because I know that it is inevitable and that at some point you may run out of fuel, you need to get the vehicle off the road as quickly as possible. So if you are running down on the E on your fuel tank, then... <laughs> Um, make sure you drive in the outside lane so you can get the vehicle off the roadway. Okay, so Sam, so the student got 55 on the practice driving test. And I'm sure that student felt a lot better about spending the 20 bucks and doing a practice driving test and finding out that he or she was not ready to take the DOT test 
and then went back and did a bit more work and was successful on their DOT test. So yeah, I really, really encourage you. And I used to call it a mock road test. It's actually a practice driving test. So do a practice driving test before you go in and take your test if you're not taking driving lessons. If you're taking driving lessons, you're going to be okay because your uh, driving instructor is going to tell you whether you're ready or not and those types of things. Okay, hall phase. For automatic tolls, you can actually avoid paying tolls because electronic rolling only reads plates unlike the normal toll, toll booths. So there you go. Well, you guys will have a, can have a discussion about that. <laughs> no, I'm not going to intervene. <laughs> because some might you know there's some ethics going on there Ela, do you need to turn your signal off and on again when turning right twice at 10 meters between um, and this was one of his complaints uh, Ela, I can't like I said I can't comment on that I don't know and what I would counsel you to do Ela, is to go and hire a driving school and do a practice driving test and that and that driving instructor will be able to give you that specific information in and around where you are taking your test at the driving authority because I, I just can't comment on that specific information that's just too specific for what I'm doing okay so I, I think we're up to 45 minutes here I think we're gonna if anybody has any other questions or whatnot uh, I think we're gonna leave it there for tonight and because uh, it's Memorial Day weekend in the States and uh, We'd certainly like to honor all the veterans uh, in the United States. So, and uh, yeah, so we're, we'll leave it there for tonight. And if anybody has any questions, by all means, leave me a comment. Send me an email, rick at Smart Drive Test. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Okay, so he had his license before in Puerto Rico. He was driving with one hand doing rolling stops or stopping after the stop line. He forgot to signal and making a right turn, etc., etc. So... <laughs> so the student had his license from Puerto Rico and didn't realize that driving for the purposes of a road test is a very different exercise than driving normally like we do every every day. So there we go. So yes, the student had to learn that there was a different set of criteria for the purposes of passing a road test. Okay. Yes. Have a great night, everyone. Hall phase. Yes. Today is Memorial. Uh, when do you go live? Uh, Silas, I go live most Sunday nights at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, the reason I went live tonight on Monday is because it was more Memorial Day weekend in the United States. When there is a statutory holiday or a long weekend, then I'll do it on Monday nights to help everybody out because most people are away on Sunday nights and they're just not really sticking around for the, for the live feed, okay? So next week, I don't think there's any holidays next week, so next week it'll be on Sunday. And as well... Uh, just have a look on the channel there on the on the front page is the live feed and it will tell you when the live feed is is going to be up for next week okay exactly there you go Sam awesome good night clockwork good night Silas thanks so much Corey and for road test you need to be more perfect uh, no hall phase you don't need to be more perfect you need a very different set of driving skills for the purposes of passing a road test. And Sam and I will both tell you, because I'll tell you, Sam and I drive differently when we actually drive as opposed to preparing and helping students uh, get ready to pass a road test. Okay, do we wave to oncoming traffic to pass before you start? Uh, absolutely not, McMice. Uh, on the, for the purposes of a road test, do not wave to other traffic or wave other traffic on, okay? Just stop. <laughs> Put the vehicle into reverse that way you've got your signal on and you've got your reverse lights on and the traffic behind you knows what you're doing and if they're there they're uh they're going to go around you and yes hall phase we're going to go out and do a raid <laughs> can we raid a channel that's funny okay so that's what you need to do and as well know uh mcmice that when they get you to a parallel park for the purposes of a road test they're not going to do it on a busy street and many uh different licensing authorities are actually uh, going to get you to do it in a closed circuit area. In other words, um, you're going to do it, uh, sorry, you're going to do it in a parking lot or something like that. All right. So thanks, everybody. Uh, if you like what you see here, consider subscribing to the channel. If you're watching it on the replay, be sure to give it a thumbs up and be, be sure to give it a thumbs up before you take off there. And thanks again, everybody. And we're going off to raid a channel with Hall Phase here. So everybody have a great night. Uh, all the best and uh, good luck in your road test.
And remember, picked up best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now. Bye.